Hey all, uh, this is going to be the first video in the VT-132 series. Uh, this is going to be an introduction to the product. So the VT-132 is a product that comes from Dave at the High Nibble. You may remember my previous video series on building the MSI-8080 replica. This is an ESP32 based emulator that has an actual hardware front panel. Great kit if you want to play with an MSI-8080. Uh, incredible software stack Dave's created for this machine. It, it's really an awesome kit to build and to play with. Very neat machine and very much you know brings back that old school feel of having you know switches and, and blinking lights on the front panel. But in this video specifically we're going to look at his VT-132. This is still in beta at this point. I'm lucky enough to be able to participate in the beta. Which is much appreciated. Thank you, Dave. Uh, VT-132 is a VT-100 emulator on steroids. So the there's a picture here of one of his early prototypes. Uh, the board itself is designed for the RC-2014 architecture. However, this board has applications way beyond the RC-2014. The serial data streams come in on the pins down here. Uh, and it would be easy, even with a board in this form factor, to adapt this to potentially a standalone VT-100 emulator. Uh, I could create an S-100 card just plugged down into, and, and Dave is talking about perhaps producing a standalone version of this, or maybe even an S-100 card that implements this. Uh, it's based on an ESP32. Uh, it produces VGA output, it's got a PS2 keyboard input, and, and just great VT100 emulation, and I mean emulation all the way down to the setup menus, and, and we'll look at that in a future video. Uh, he started with the FabGL library for the SP32, and one of the components in it was a VT100 emulator. I spent some time playing with that as well, uh, but I say Dave has extended that, done an incredible job with the extensions to that. Uh, it very much reminds me of uh, back in the day when I was a programmer working on deck hardware, sitting in front of my VT-132, the setup screens, the feel. Uh, he's done incredible work with the VT-100 fonts. Uh, he does the pixel stretching, uh, just like the VT-100 terminal did. If you don't know what, what that was, uh, go ahead and research it. But it was basically deck's way of taking a... Uh, a, a character, the thought pattern for a character, and on the horizontal, doubling the pixels. So using two pixels, even though there was only one in ROM, to give kind of that distinctive VT100 a character set. Uh, it, it So far, it, it's an incredible uh, device, and I think it's going to be a really wonderful thing in the emulation community. With the crazies like me, who actually uh, have Vindy Just 100 machines, uh, and play with that kind of stuff. So, as it, you know, you can see his website here. Just go to thehighnibble.com and you'll find the VT132 page. Uh, he gets into using FabGL as the platform. Here's a little later look at the card. Uh, you know, there's white silk screen, etc. Uh, this still isn't the final production version looking at the card, but it's getting close. Uh, he jumps in to here and all the things this thing does. So like, like I say, this would be easily adaptable to anything that's got, uh, you, you know, a serial data stream. Uh, it's got, you know, the VT100 emulator, and actually another cool feature on this is it's also got a haze modem implementation on a different uh, set of serial pins on it that lets you do things like connect to a, a Telnet site. Uh, using you know basically Hades modem commands and, it, and it's a really cool way to get it you know you know content out on the internet. Uh, I'm, I'm using Qterm uh, and CPM to actually use this, but uh, just you know great emulation. It, it does 1800 to column. Uh, it's got various uh, character cells. Uh, you know, it's got VGA uh, 437, the Deck National, you know, the VT20. Just, it's this incredible list of things this board is capable of doing. Smooth scrolling actually works. Uh, uh, in, in, as you said, it implements all of the advanced video options for the VT100. Uh, it does work 132 column, 25 line. 
all the standard uh, character attributes. It also implements color, you know, with the later uh, uh, escape commands. There's actually a physical buzzer on it, so you can have key click on or off if you want, and you know, it actually interprets the bell, the control G, which is really pretty cool. Uh, in the V200 emulation, you can go into this, you know, the V200 setup, you can pick your parameters, you can actually save those to NVRAM. Uh, in the VT-132, so they're there next time you power up. Uh, you know, it's just it's just this incredible emulation. Uh, you've seen me start down the path in a few other videos for VT-100 emulation from a, a, a pick-based implementation that I was never really happy with. Uh, the, the emulation wasn't great. There was emulation using the Parallax processor or, or the propeller processor from Parallax. But again, it's okay, but it's not great. Uh, and when I saw Dave was headed down this path, you know, I approached him and, like I say, got invited to the beta program. So, you know, it's got this Telnet Wi-Fi AT modem. This is really cool because for the, the second serial port on it, it's actually using the wireless on the VT or on the ESP32 to connect to your wireless network. So literally with a set of app commands, uh, at the modem, I was able to basically say, here's my Wi-Fi, here's my SSID and password, connect to it, uh, and then do an ATD, so AT dial and give it a, you know, a, a, a URL, essentially, uh, and a port to get out and connect to a Telnet site. Uh, really cool, really cool, and that would work out of the box with, like, my, uh, you know, hardware-based uh, Altair 8800 emulation. Uh, using a program like Qterm on it uh, to TTY1. But, you, you know, there it is. Uh, it would work really well. So, it's really cool. This is really meant as an introduction and to hopefully get you as excited about this as I am. Uh, I encourage you to look at it. You, you know, if you're interested in VT100 emulation at all, uh, like the rest of us, can't afford a VT100 when they actually come on the market. I certainly don't have storage space for one either. Great emulation. Really happy so far with the beta. Just can't say you know anything negative about you know my experience with it so far. Uh, so you know it's coming. It'll be a product. Uh, thank you, Dave, again for designing this and all of the effort you put into the software and, and the hardware as well. He's taken feedback from uh, beta testers as, as well that makes the card really adaptable, like I say, to other platforms if you want to. Anyhow, I'll wrap this up here. I could ramble on all day as I usually do, and I'll see you in future videos.